Hey y'all, what's going on? It's your boy Man in the Wild. Just um kind of my thoughts here about this this election and you know the characters that we got and you know just the the direction that we're going in and you know just I don't know. YouTube is my place to vent. You understand? So um because when I was watching this damn video <laughs> when I was watching this video, I don't think I yelled at my phone more like in consecutive, you know, um, I don't know, burst than I did when I when I watched this, um, you know, listen to this lady talk. Because um, I mean, just to I mean, just to sum it up before before it even starts, I mean, she's not the answer. You know, she's simply not not because she's a woman, you know, not because you know she's. I don't know, I guess of color, even though technically Indians are Caucasian, but, um, but yeah, no, she's just, she's not the answer because she doesn't ever have an answer. So I don't know. Check this down, check this interview out. Cause I think this is the first time she's actually, you know, been, been, you know, pushed back and, um, kind of been waiting to see it. Bad Vice President, thank you for the time. Thank you. It's good to be with you, Brett. You know, voters tell pollsters all over the country and here in Pennsylvania that immigration is one of the key issues that they're looking at this election, and specifically the influx of illegal immigrants from more than 150 countries. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have, and you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right? do you and and I wanted I wanted to be known. He asked, "How many people do you think?" That that's just give a number, right? Just give a number because as I've watched um, as I've watched her speak, you know, listen to the people who defend her. You know, and everything like that, especially them, them uh, delusional ass minds on the view. Right. There's a lot of. I don't know. How can you say narcissism within whatever they say and do? Right. Because you'll notice right now, right now you're doing um, like you're deflecting. Right. Trying to go around, beat around the bush. You understand? Instead of just answering the question directly. You know, and having dealt with um, <laughs> motherfuckers with extreme traits on the narcissism spectrum. You understand? You can pick up on, you know, whenever somebody's actually, you know, being genuine, you know, when they're full of shit. You understand? And when somebody doesn't want to answer basic questions, Basic question. They're full of shit. Just a number. Do you but, think it's but, one million, three million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay, the point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and, Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of apprehensions... I'm not finished. I'm not finished. We have, a, we have an immigration system... It's a rough estimate of six million people have been released be, but, into the country. And let me see, just... So, so basically what just happened is he asked a question... You understand? And any good reporter, you know, anybody, you know, who, who knows what they're doing doesn't ask a question unless they already got the answer. Right. So all he wanted was the answer so we can progress with this conversation. Right. You know, but instead you want to sit there and, and, and say whatever narrative, you know, that you want to spill spill out when don't nobody give a fuck. We've been listening to this shit for, for like months now. The same shit comes out your mouth whenever somebody asks you certain questions. It's like you have an automated response. Right? A literal automated response text back type shit whenever, some, whenever somebody asks you a question about, you know, all you hear immigration. Okay, immigration, that's what I got to say. It don't matter what the question is. It don't matter how they're trying, what they're trying to uh, uh, put in front of you. Full of shit. We've been waiting for you to answer shit all this time. And no, motherfuckers ain't waiting no more. Like, motherfuckers is tired of waiting. 
finish, I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was beginning to answer. No, and fuck you when, when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. Most significantly, the policy that required illegal immigrants to be detained through deportation, either in the U.S. or in Mexico. And you switched that policy. They were released from custody awaiting trial. So instead, included in those were a large number of single men, adult men, who went on to commit heinous crimes. So looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration at the beginning of our administration within practically hours of taking the oath the first bill that we offered congress before we worked on infrastructure before the inflation reduction act before the chips and science act before any before the bipart yeah, before we get lost on um the the, the, in the inside the topic of what was being discussed he asked you, do you feel bad about anything that you did when you released motherfuckers into, you know, the country that, you know, weren't properly um, vetted? You know, because, <clears throat> I don't know, how can I put this? I don't like all of the documentation about certain shit that we got to do here, right? But at the end of the day, you know, certain um, records need to be kept, you know, in order to keep people safe and to keep, you know... Motherfuckers that's on bullshit, you know, um, in a database of, of being on bullshit, right? And so he asked a question. These people were supposed to stay in Mexico before, you know, they were released here after they got, you know, uh, investigated and whatnot. Are you cool to be over here? You know, which is cool. But then you switch that shit immediately. Right, just to be, just to do anything opposite of Trump, and these motherfuckers do shit and hurt people, kill people. You know what I'm saying? And they're asking you if you feel sorry, or you feel bad, and you start talking about, you know, I, I mean, I already know that you're gonna go towards Trump because that's what the narcissistic mind does is when they deflect and blame shift and all of that shit, they gotta have a a a, a villain in their story. Right, because they're always the victim. Partisan Safety Communities Act, the first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It was and, essentially and so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the elite. May I finish? Yes, may, I finish may I finish responding, please? But, here, but, this, but you have to let me finish. You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. Responding to the point you're raising okay. and, and, I don't then, and then to my knowledge um she showed up late you know so showing up late um you know would definitely press the interviewer you know to be able to you know you know get to what they want to get to you know so if you show up late and you about to go on these little roundabout rants and and basically basically what what she's doing is she's doing that filler shit you understand? Well, you know you got to write, I don't know, a 500 word essay or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You just start, you only at 300 and you done wrote everything you wanted to write and need to write. Man, you start filling in, you know, words as many as possible here and there and making like the uh, repetitive type shit. You know what I'm saying? Making redundant ass statements here and there and all of that, you know, to try to make it to that 500. That's what the fuck she's doing. You understand? And right now she's dealing with somebody who doesn't have time to listen. I, okay, you've already said this shit. I've heard this shit. You're not going to use my platform to be on that bullshit. You know, but here she go with the, I'm speaking, can I finish and all that. No, you can't finish because you ain't saying shit. I'd like to finish. Yes, ma'am. We recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question, it is a priority for us as a nation and for the American people. And our focus has been on fixing a problem. And from day one then, we have done a number of things, including to address our asylum system and pour, put more resources, getting more judges, what we needed to do. Let's not lose focus. Do you feel bad about the decision you made knowing that motherfuckers got killed behind your decision? That was the question. 
do to tighten up penalties and increase penalties for illegal crossings, what we needed to do to deal with ports, points of entry between border entry points. That's the work we did, and we worked on supporting what was a bipartisan effort, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress, to actually strengthen the border. That border bill would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border, which is why I believe the Border Patrol agents supported the bill. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States, which is a scourge affecting people of every background, every geographic location in our country, killing people. It would have allowed us to put more resources into prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, which I have done yes, as the attorney general, former attorney general of a border state. Madam Vice President, a couple of things. <laughs> he like, man, all right, I done heard this. All right, you know what? I know where she's going with this. I, I, I'm on a limited time timetable right now. Let, let's move on. Like, don't nobody want to hear this shit. That's the, thing that, that's the thing that people ain't understanding. You know, people don't want to hear this shit. You know, whenever you, because this person here, I mean, she's talking about Trump right now. You understand? She's talking about how he, um, you know, quashed the bill. That you know, my motherfucker. You always want to talk about somebody else instead of talking about yourself. The original question was, do you feel bad about your decision, knowing that motherfuckers died behind it, that had no business dying behind it? That's it. And as a human being. Right, who has empathy, you 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 can uh, uh, humble yourself to the moment without damaging your character, without damaging your image. That actually enhances your image because it makes people think like, okay, they really do give a fuck. But when you don't even acknowledge the shit, you go on this little pre-type rant about whatever the fuck you want to say because that's the message that you're trying to put out. Answer the fucking question. ...of drugs, Six. guns, and human beings. Six and Donald Democrats. Trump, but let me just finish. Six and Democrats Donald Trump voted against that bill. learned about that bill and told them to kill it because he preferred to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And in this election, this is rightly a discussion that the American people want to have. And what they want are solutions. And they want a president of the United States who's not playing political games with the issue, I hear you. but actually is focused on fixing Six it. Six Democrats voted I mean, against you that. You want to talk about political games. I mean, yo, you're claiming to be black. Okay, nip that shit in the bud. You're claiming to be black and pandering to black people because that's what them uh, uh, democratic motherfuckers do. You know, and it's crazy that I had to turn 41 to really, you know, grab the concept of, you know, how that shit actually does work. You know, and it pains me to say it that uh, you go back to that um, that uh, inside the mind of the Masonic nobleman, you know, where he actually did say to Democrats. I don't know if it was in that that video, but during that conversation and I'm shitty that, you know. That man, you get knowledge wherever you can get it from, but damn, you can't stand motherfuckers sometimes. You know, but he was like, the Republicans actually want to build shit, right? And the Democrats only just walk around with their hand out, always wanting to know what you can do for them, you know what I'm saying? And don't never do shit for you. You know, and that's how the shit works. So now you're sitting there, you, you've been uh, claiming for all these decades now that, you know, black folks need to be Democrat because... You know, we actually care about the democracy and all of this other shit. But, Joe, this shit is a republic, to be honest with you. All right, to the republic for which it stands. So, you know, that whole word game and all of the other shit. And then when you look at what's going on. Like, yo, miss me with that bullshit. Y'all use everything as politics, especially people's lives when it comes to this whole uh, 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 race shit. You know, you want people to sit here, like you going to sit here and send Barack Obama to scold motherfuckers because they don't want to fuck with you. Like, yo, if that ain't a political game, you tell me what the fuck is, because what the fuck do you do for us, number one? But number two, you you claim to be something that you're not. That's, that's, you want to talk about weird? That's fucking weird. A 
a father that was born in Jamaica, or whatever, of Irish and Indian descent, and a mother of Indian descent don't make you fucking black. What the fuck is wrong with you? Growing up, going, growing up in Oakland, whatever, however many years it was, going to a, a HBCU don't make you fucking black. I went to HBCU with Asians. And, it's, and listen to her, because everything she says that we don't need as a president is exactly what the fuck she is. That's that projection shit. Bill, it would have allowed 1.8 million illegal Im immigrants into the country a year. A lot, a lot of conservatives had a problem with it. These are the six Democrats. But more importantly, back to the original premise, Jocelyn Nungary, Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration, well before a negotiated uh, bipartisan bill. Former President Clinton actually referred to Lake and Riley Sunday campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lake and Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, this is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying to you, no, do you no, no, owe Brent, those I families? Really, You're like, what the fuck are you I'm shaking your head for? If he's spitting facts, if he's spitting timeline facts, you can't argue with fucking timelines. You can't run from them shits. You can't have something happen six months down the road and try to blame everything that happened a year before that on that shit. No, that shit didn't even fucking happen yet. That shit was you. And you see, she can't even accept and hold responsibility for her actions. Low key, that's a sick motherfucker. Ology. Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have. Oh, now we're going now we're going to address the shit. He asked you the question probably like five, four, three, four minutes ago. I don't know how long. I know I went the fuck in. But he asked you this question a while back. Would you do anything different? Feel bad. You're going to go on a little political rant and then get pressed on the shit. Now you feel bad? Get the fuck out of my face. Heard. So that is true. It is also true that if a board of security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock, trying to hold it all together. Madam Vice President. To ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election, because there was a solution, Brett. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. So hold on. Before before this even goes any further, don't let the bullshit, don't let the bullshit sit. You know, when you want to sit here and talk about we need a president that's willing to run on solutions and not, you know, all the fixing and all this other shit. Yo, you are in the motherfucking White House right now. Every single thing that you say that you want to do, try to do, hope to do, can do right fucking now. I don't understand why people can't grab that concept and that's what, that's what bothers me about this whole shit, right? But, you know, you, you, you get high blood pressure, you gotta let it roll off, but at the end of it, at the end of it, you can't trust a motherfucker that could do something today, but will promise to do it tomorrow. Because of the Biden-Harris okay, administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter, Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. 
That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss. Sincerely. But let's talk about. No, ain't no but. Unquote. Damn. 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 Vice President, thank you. But ain't no but to that. Like if you sorry for a loss, right? If you're sorry for a loss, you're sorry for that loss. There's no but after that. There's no, there's no, you know, yeah, I feel but, but, but no. You hold on to that shit. I'm sorry for her loss. And, and, and you know what? The, the, the policies that we had set in place in that moment, if that's what caused it, like, there's nothing I could do but, but, but be apologetic behind that and trying to move forward behind, you know, uh, uh, beyond this shit and make everything better for people. A motherfucker would trust you more. But the fact that you can't do it, the fact that it's in fucking possible because you've seen her before shaking her head and all this other shit. Like you can't, if you can't, if a motherfucker cannot take responsibility and accountability for their shit, that's somebody you don't even want in your personal life, let alone running the fucking country. Because hell, you see where the fuck we at? What is happening right now with an individual who does not want to participate in solutions? Let's talk about that as well. Right? See, so, you, in, in so, instead of, so instead of taking accountability for your actions, you want to sit there and blame shift and bring up another motherfucker's name that had nothing to do with your bullshit. I'm telling you, man, like this shit... This shit is it, it, it's, it's sickening, you know, it, it, it's sickening to me, you know, the way that, I mean, we are being manipulated. I mean, we've been manipulated in so many other different ways, too. I mean, I mean look at my damn channels. But, you know, in, in this regard, you know, how this hits so close to home, because this actually is affecting personal relationships. You know, it's affecting personal relationships on, on two different ends of, of the spectrum, right? You know, because on my end, you know, if, if you really rock with Kamala and you've actually listened to her and you, you know, don't see anything wrong with how stupid she is and how dumb, you know, she can come across and all of that and how drunk she sounds at times. Like, if you can't understand and see all of that, it's like, I, I start to, like, worry about your judgment. You know, and then on the other end of it, you know, the people who have the Trump derangement syndrome, you know, they have this, this, this like little, what is it, reality inside of their mind who makes a Trump supporter seem to be a misogynistic person. You know, who exhibits toxic masculinity and all of this type of stuff. So it's like, you know, people have both of theirs on. So it's very, very, like, it's very divided. You know, but the only thing that's different is, you know, that what makes this side different than that side is I'm not going to hold it against you. You know, but what's been created by by Kamala's camp is is, is disturbing. I said it's disturbing enough to make me give a fuck and actually talk about the shit. Yes, I told you, I feel awful for what she and her family have experienced. During that time, you said repeatedly that the border was secure. When in your mind did it start becoming a crisis? I think it, we've had a broken immigration system transcending, by the way, Donald Trump's administration even before. Let's, let's all be honest about that. I have no pride in saying that this is a perfect immigration system. I've been clear, I think we all are, that it needs to be fixed. We need more, I was just down at the border talking with border agents and they will tell you, and I'm sure you probably, I know you investigate and you are a, a serious journalist. So, so it's funny how she says that the shit needs to be fixed, right? How the shit needs to be fixed. You know what? Since it switched over there, let me go ahead and show you where we got 750. All right. I'm Unquote, this borders right. are. Vice President Harris was not. So, so this is just the, the media clips of, um, you know, before and after, um, as you see, Biden dropped out. 
before and after Biden dropped out the race. Not a border czar. Meantime, Vice President and border czar Kamala Harris facing some backlash. What he said about Harris and immigration was not true. She was never appointed border czar. Uh, and this will be her first visit to the uh, U.S.-Mexico border region since she was appointed as the border czar by President Biden. People got to counter the misinformation. You already hear folks talking about the border czar. She wasn't the border czar. President Biden tapped Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, to be the border czar. Now, she wasn't the border czar. That's what Republicans uh, labeled her. They were very critical of Kamala Harris, especially in her role as border czar. Now what she's up against is folks lying about her border record, calling her a border czar. Kamala Harris, who was appointed as the border czar. The Biden team didn't declare her the border czar. They wanted her to work on kind of the root causes of immigration. Mm -hmm. There has been so much criticism against Kamala Harris. You know, she was the border czar. Calling her sort of the border czar, uh, which wasn't necessarily the case. So the border, if they weren't planning to address it in a major way, do not make her your border czar. She met with some of the Northern Triangle kind of quote unquote border czar. All right. So as it's clear, Bad vice president. as it's clear, yeah. you know, she was, you know, in charge of the border. Right. She was in charge of the border. And so once the shit hit the fan and now you know she's um you know running for this 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 president now um her her border czar record is is fucked right and so you know the the manipulation of the media you see trying to wipe out the fact that she was in control of the border that's that manipulation shit i'll be talking about you know, because you see, they was at a straight, like, Democratic, like, convention type shit when they mentioned her being the fucking border czar. But then all these people come out. I don't know why they keep saying she ain't the border czar when she wasn't ever the border. Motherfucker, because y'all said the shit. That's what, it's like, she was supposed to be in control of the shit. She opened the, the doors up. Just like a motherfucking narcissistic motherfucker to create a problem, Right? And they act like they the motherfucking solution. The fuck out of my face, man. Right? And saying that this is a perfect immigration system, I've been clear, I think we all are. That it needs to be fixed. We need more... I was just down at the border, talking with border agents. And they will that tell you, and I'm sure you. you probably... I know you investigate and you are a, a serious journalist. They will tell you, we need more judges. We need, to process, we need to process those cases faster. We need the support for those cases that should be prosecuted. They need more resources, and Congress ultimately is the only place that that's going to get fixed, Brad. Well, that's how the system that's, works. That's the premise that's, of this question. But there that's were 90 the plus works. executive orders that were rescinded in the first days. Many of those were Trump border policies. I'm not going to stay here because... There's other things to talk about, but you frequently re talk to the Border Patrol Union for support of that bipartisan. So, 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 like, I don't want to skim over this part. Okay, so if it was like, I think it was like 94, if I'm not mistaken, but 90 some. So, 90 some policies got reversed as soon as they entered office. Okay, meaning they didn't have to go through other motherfuckers to do what it is that they wanted to do in, in regards to the border. Right? They didn't have to go through Congress to do all of that shit. They just said, fuck it. Now, nah, take that off. No, nope. X that, X that, X that, X that, X that. All right, boom. Now we in there. Right? So even if for the sake of argument that those 90 some orders, you know, did go through Congress, did get approved by all of these motherfuckers. So that means that Trump wasn't delusional and in, in making them shits himself and just doing the shit himself. Other motherfuckers signed off on it. If that was the case. But no, nah, these motherfuckers got... These, these people have um, done everything in their power to, to make sure that um, they put a firm feeling inside of, our, um, inside of our reality that they've created for us. Right? And that villain is Donald Trump. You know, and I personally was, you know, a part of the um, fuck Trump train, you know, because I was believing some of the shit, you know, because I ain't really come around to all of the, the other shit till like 2018. So what, 15 through through 17 and shit, I was kind of, I, I was being programmed, right? But like I said, as a human being with that empathy and, 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 and humility, you know when you made a mistake and you admit it and you move the fuck on. 
unlike the motherfucker that's running for president. Get the fuck out of here. Bill, and they did. They supported it. But they also just endorsed Donald Trump and said, you've been, quote, a failure with border security. Why do you think they said that? I think they're frustrated, and I get it. They want support. They want support, and that's what that border security bill would have done. These guys down at the border, these men and women, they're working hard. Uh, they're working around the clock. Don't this shit. I get it. No, the fuck you don't. There's a lot of people that look back at what you said in 2019 when you first ran for president. Uh, And there have been changes, and you've talked about some of them. When it comes to immigration, you supported allowing immigrants in the country illegally to apply for driver's license, to qualify for free tuition at universities, to be enrolled in free health care. Do you still support those things? Listen, that was five years ago, and I'm very clear that I will follow the law. I have made that statement over and over again, and as Vice President of the United States, that's exactly what I've done, not to mention before. You, if that's the case, you chose a running mate, Tim Walz, who, governor of Minnesota, who signed those very things. And it's real, it's real funny that, you know, that the words that come out of her mouth is follow the law, follow, follow the law when, um, you know, she's repeatedly shirked the law in regards to, um, you know, making sure motherfuckers uh, uh, get charged with crimes that they didn't do, you know, or that, you know, that they didn't have evidence for. And, um, yeah, it's funny, it's funny that she mentions follow the law when she's been, you know, she has a record of, you know, giving zero fucks about the law, you know, when it comes to whatever agenda it is that she has, you know, behind closed doors. I said, it's a sick motherfucker right here, for real. Into state law. So do you support that? We are very clear, and I am very clear, as is Tim Walls, that we must support and enforce federal law, and that is exactly what we will do. So (laughs) decriminalizing border crossings, like you said in 2019. I, I do not believe in decriminalizing border crossings yes, and I've not done do. that as vice president I will not do wow. that as president so these are evolutions I, and, and, but, that you've had no, but let's so, be- so it's funny how people um, have a way of playing with words here so if you got a motherfucker that's coming up over over the, um, the border right and in years prior was an illegal fashion right just by a motherfucker waving a wand and saying nope that's not illegal no more you can't then call them illegal because they're here legally Right. And that's why it's funny she plays with the law like that when you can just write it down, whatever the fuck you want the law to be. Like that shit, like, I mean, come on, man. Not being able to see that after actually uh, doing, you know, due diligence with your research and, and actually putting yourself outside of it. Right. Removing your emotions from it. Right. Should be able to see. But that's why these motherfuckers want you to be so emotional about shit. That's why she's about that joy and about them good vibes and all of this other shit. Yeah, because she wants you to be in a fucking LSD days type shit. They want you to be like one of them little hippies and shit with with the little glasses and the flowers and the shit. and You know, fucking everybody that you see and all of that stuff because, hell, it's a big orgy party. That's what they want us to be. Think with your fucking brain. Very clear. <laughs> I'm the only person who's running for president who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations. Nobody from gives the a fuck. Cartel, to the Guadalajara quota, cartel, to people who have trafficked in guns, drugs, and human beings. I have spent a significant part of my career Nobody gives a going after people who present a threat to the safety of the American people and and cross our border with the intent of doing us harm and cross our border illegally. And I will do that work as vice president. I take that work quite seriously. This is a time when voters, especially here in Pennsylvania, are inundated with commercials and ads. They just want it to stop because it's every commercial. But many of them add noise, but a few of them seem to break through. This particular one from the Trump campaign has gotten a lot of attention. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, For prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender. 
inmate in the prison system would have access. So are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Um, you're probably familiar with, now it's a public report that under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available to on a medical necess necessity basis to people in the federal prison system. And I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know what, you got to take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no. You heard that? She just said, she just said, hold on, hold on, I want to hear that one again, because. To people in the federal prison system, and I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing, you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know what, you got to take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no surgeries Right, happened. when you say shit like that and take zero responsibility for your shit, that person is full of shit. Recognize that. When you got somebody who not, does nothing but try to hold you accountable for shit, and sometimes that shit don't even fucking exist. You, gonna have, you got a motherfucker trying to hold somebody accountable for something that don't even fucking exist. But then, but then sneer their little nose up and like, you got to take responsibility for your administration. What the fuck responsibility is she even talking about in this situation? Like he just said, nobody had the surgery. He didn't advocate for the shit. You out here publicly advocating for the shit. Answer the fucking question. But no. No. You're going to tell another motherfucker to be responsible and I'll get the fuck out of here. In this pregnant it's, 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 so, right. Would you still advocate for using taxpayer dollars for gender reassignment surgery? I will surgeries? follow the law. Just as I, I, you I think so. You will follow the law. So is that you something? Is president. that what these motherfuckers done told you? You know, when it comes to a question that you don't really, you know, get down with or understand or, you know, want to go too much further and just say, I'll follow. I'm just going to follow the law. Follow the law. When you're the ones writing the fucking law. Like, ain't nothing wrong. Like, don't get it twisted. Laws need to be there. You know, some of them do need to be there. Some of them need to go the fuck away. Right. You know, but. You know, laws do need to exist to have, you know, some type of order and structure in a society. Not to say that it doesn't. However, when you write in bullshit ass laws, just to be able to say, I'm going to follow the law. Fuck out of here, man. Don't like, man, man. So this person is not good for any of us, yo. Unless we own bullshit. Like I said, I think it's real. He spent $20 million on those ads trying to create a sense of fear in the voters because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people. Whereas. Remember that. At $20 million on that ad. On an issue that as it relates to the biggest issues that affect the American people, it's really quite remote. And again, his policy was no different. Look at where we are, though. They on plans for the American we'll people, I'm offering a plan to deal with affordable housing. Nobody I'm offering a plan to deal up. with what we need to do to strengthen small businesses, which are the backbone of America's economy. Oh God, I'm offering a plan crazy. that is about taking care of young parents and giving them the... So every time she says the middle class... Uh, small businesses or the uh, backbone. I always think about um, Will Ferrell on the campaign when he said like everybody he was around was America's backbone. You know, I forgot all the different ones he had, but that's the person I think about anytime she says backbone. Somebody's America's backbone because it's like because you, I mean, you are a character right now playing a role and you're full of shit. She's full of shit. 
support they need. My plans for the economy will strengthen the economy, as have been reviewed by 16 Nobel laureates, uh, Goldman Sachs, Moody's, and recently the Wall Street Journal, which have all studied our plans and have indicated my plans for our economy would strengthen our economy, his would make them weaker, Why do you would think ignite inflation, say, and invite a recession by the middle of next year. Those you, are the facts. Why do you think more facts. people say they I'm trust you? him? on the economy, then they trust you. I think that when you look at an analysis of our plans for what we would do as president of the United States, it has been clear to those who study and understand how economic policy works that moving forward, because I do believe the American people are ready to turn the page on the divisiveness and the, the type of rhetoric that has come out of Donald Trump, people are ready to chart a new way forward. See, and, and, and like I said with that projection shit, yo, nah, motherfuckers is tired of y'all asses, right? Motherfuckers is tired of you with your bullshit ass rhetorics. You know what I'm saying? With your bullshit ass little, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Like I said, with, with Joe Biden punk ass coming up there talking about you ain't, you ain't black if you don't vote for me because he got a black chick with him type shit. The fuck out of here. Like, like that, that's in fucking saying to me. So again, whenever she's talking about something and, and talking bad about somebody, she's talking bad about herself. And whenever she speaks good about herself, she's speaking good about the next motherfucker. Man, I live this shit. I live this shit. And for the record, if you listen to the mind of the Masonic nobleman, I got my fucking kids and have since the, in the last three years. They want a president who has a plan for the future and a plan that is sound and will strengthen our country. My plan for the economy does exactly that. His plan would be again to give tax cut to billionaires and the biggest corporations in our country and blow up our deficit. It's interesting you said turn the page, Madam Vice President. You were asked on two different shows last week what, if anything, you would do differently than President Biden. Here's yeah. what you said. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Under a Harris administration, <laughs> What would the major changes be and what would stay the same? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Um, I know. And so that would be one change in terms of. Yes. But also, it, I think it's important to say with, you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. So you're not Joe Biden. You're not Donald Trump. But but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently. Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuum. Bro, you are never very clear. Stop fucking saying that. Stop saying that. Yo, it's only so many things that you can say, um, so many times that you can say a certain thing in certain situations and all of that. Like, yo, you're overusing, like, yo, if she was, if, if she was being graded, right, with this essay and all of this other shit, yo, she would have red marks all through that bitch, right, and have to rewrite the shit because, like, yo, you, you, you don't want to turn this in. You can't keep saying the same shit. Especially when you're not being what the fuck you trying to say that you've been, which is clear. You're not being clear. You're never clear. Like, damn, that shit is crazy. Like, man, this shit is crazy. Of Joe Biden's crazy. presidency. <laughs> and like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. I, for example, am someone who has not spent the majority of my career in Washington, D.C. I invite ideas, whether it be from the Republicans who are supporting me, who are, were just on stage with and me. And like, yo, and then now she's sitting there trying to act like she ain't no damn career politician because she ain't been in D.C. Yo, like, that's a half truth. You have been a career fucking politician. Just not all the time in D.C. We're not stupid. You think motherfuckers is stupid. So again, she's saying something good about herself right now, right? But she's actually speaking about her fucking opponent.
She's a fucking career politician. Minutes ago, and the business sector and others who can contribute to the decisions that I make about, for example, my plan for increasing the supply of housing in America and bringing down the cost of housing, addressing the issue of small businesses, which is about working with the private sector to bring more capital and access to capital to our small business leaders, including my plan for a $25,000 down payment assistance for first time home buyers and for small businesses extending the tax deduction. Don't nobody want to hear this shit no more. To We've heard a lot about those plans in, in recent days. Your campaign <laughs> slogan is a new way forward, and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years. So what are you turning the page from? Oh, man. Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we have been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country and have Americans literally point fingers at each other. Rhetoric and an approach to leadership that suggests that the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of what we all know. The strength of leadership is based on who you lift up. So, hold on, let me see what you're The strength of an American president, which is one who understands that the vast majority of us have more in common than what separates us. Madam that Vice is President, more turning than 70% the page, of people That is about pollsters. turning the page on rhetoric that people are frankly exhausted of, Brett. More than people 70%. Are no, I, damn, I almost forgot what the question was until I just, I just kind of remembered it about the whole, um, you know, what are you turning from, you know, the page from and all of that shit. And you want to sit here and talk about the past 10 years, but like, yo, at, let me see, to my knowledge, I'm not the best in math, but... Um, Obama got elected in 08, and then he got elected again in 12. Trump, 16, Biden, 20. So out of the last, you know, what is that, four elections, it's been a Democrat that won. You know, so if I'm doing my math correctly, the only four years, you know, um, four years and four years, 21 and four, y'all have four years to clean up the four and stuff. Yeah, no, that, that doesn't fit. You know, that doesn't fit. You know, so again, she's saying something good about herself. We need to turn the page. We need a new way forward. She's telling us we need a new way forward from her dumb ass. Right? You just got to know how to listen to these people. The people tell the country is on yeah, the wrong track. We're exhausted with they you. Say the country is on the wrong track. <laughs> if it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you <laughs> being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person- What the fuck office. does that have to do with anything? Like, yo, look at that shit. What the fuck does him running for office have to do with y'all being in the motherfucking White House? The answer, not a motherfucking thing. She ain't got shit to say. I, you Vice and President. I both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. No, ain't no you and I both, motherfucker. You supposed to be the one to sit there and tell us what the fuck you talking about. That's what your job as a fucking president to do. Your job as a, any type of politician, any type of leader of any kind. You understand? Hell, I coach. If I sat there and, and was trying to talk to the kids about how to, uh, what the A gap is and what the B gap is and all of this shit, and I'm just pointing at the damn thing, I man, y'all know what I'm talking about. No, the fuck they don't. You got to tell them. You got to be able to formulate a fucking thought inside of your brain to be able to bring it out to your mouth or your tongue and tell them. Fuck out of here. God, is that over the last decade? You know what I'm talking about. What the fuck is this? Come, but listen, over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me, the 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 former chief of staff to the president, Donald Trump, uh, former defense secretaries, national security advisor, and his vice president, one that he is unfit to serve, that he is unstable that he is dangerous, and that people are exhausted 
with someone who professes to be a leader who spends full time demeaning and, and, and engaging in personal grievances and it being about him Madam instead Vice of President, the American people. People are case, tired of that. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Why is he beating you in a lot of swing states? Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States? Why is that happening? This is an election for president of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. I know, but it's not it's supposed to be. It, it, it is not supposed to be a so cakewalk for anyone. So are they misguided, the 50 percent? Are they I'm, stupid? What, oh, what God, is it? I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people, suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. We asked that the, question. Do you hear this shit, Joe? Like, do, and do you hear the, the, the conviction in her voice? Right? Like, she is, like, she is really trying to make sure that you as an American who is watching this understands what this man will do. Do you understand that this motherfucker was already president for four years and didn't do none of the shit that y'all said that he was going to fucking do? do? Do people really not like that's why motherfuckers don't fuck with you. That's why over half of us is like, nah, fuck you. Because all the same shit that y'all used the first time, like, we saw the results. Because, yo, gas prices are very, very, um, um, what do you want to call it? Um, damn, the word, the word has escaped me, right? But it's very, it indicates, yes, it's an indicator of the economy, for, you know, because, you need gas to get some to get stuff to different places. So shit, that's gonna affect all the prices of shit. That's just how it works. So when gas got skyrocketed with Obama, everything went the fuck up. I remember gas was like 432, the highest I got it at one point. That's where well, the lowest I could get it, but that, that was the highest I remember the lowest getting it. Yeah, around 08, 09. You know what I'm saying? So from that, the gallon of milk went up to five dollars. You know, that's just how that shit works. So I know when Trump was in office, gas was no more than $2. Under under $2. That meant that, that, meant that we could keep more of our money and, and spend more of our money on the economy. We've already seen the results of this motherfucker. So for this motherfucker right here to be so passionate Right. To be so passionate about spewing fucking lies. Like I said, that's a sick motherfucker. To the former president today, Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall and this is how he responded. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was like threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest. Oh gangster. No, it's right. true. We no, but think question. of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. So, Brett, I, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking about the American people. That's not what you just showed. Well, he was asked no, about that no, specific... No, 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 that's not what you just showed in all no, fairness no, no, no. and I'm respect. Not. For the sake of argument, if there was an enemy within, man, why the fuck would he talk about the American people and why the, how the fuck do you think he wouldn't be talking about your dumb ass? The fuck out of here. That was the question. Even if, I don't, I don't know if the clip is real, I don't know, but I just know what comes out of her mouth is bullshit. So, you know, you run the opposite direction and then figure it out from there, but yeah. That we asked him. Uh, he didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. No, he has no, no, no. talked about locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, <laughs> the president of the United States in the She's United States of America oh. should be willing to be able to handle 
criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone being able to being able to accept criticism. Motherfucker, the whole time you ain't been able to accept responsibility because that's what criticism is. It's being held to account. And all the time, each time you hear, you nodding your head and you saying, I'm sorry, but, and all of this shit. Like, that's not holding the fucking accountability for yourself. Like, yo, she thinks she cooking right now. Get the fuck out of like here. Like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. He's quoted in the Bob Woodward book that way, yes. Uh, let me ask you this, no, Madam Vice uh, President. You call let's not Donald Trump. The significance you you, you of that. call Donald Trump. Um, he's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. Is unstable. He is unstable, Brad. Uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally it, not stable. Yo, she's full of shit, man. Hold on, let me let the. Yeah, uh, he's not let stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden. Awkward silence. <laughs> I have watched in, from the Oval Office to the Situation Room. And he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe Biden, no concerns Brett, raised. Brett, Joe Biden is not on ballot. Yo. For her, and see, and this is, this is another funny thing coming from her. The whole time that this motherfucker couldn't walk up no stairs, the whole time that he couldn't ride a bike, the whole time he was fumbling on his thing, on, on his speeches, and even after the debate, where he decided to quit because he wasn't up for it type shit, or, or you know, they kicked him out, however that cool shit worked out or whatever. But everybody seen that this motherfucker could not do anything presidential. Right? But yeah, here go Kamala, defending dude. But then now, all of a sudden, you want to sit here and come at your opponent's mental capacity? You, you're, you're, not a, you're not a good judge of character on that one. You're not a good character witness on that one. Matter of fact, you're fucking horrible. So anything you got to say about the subject is going, we're going to run the opposite way on that one. Because you're so full of shit. Understand when you're dealing with a manipulator, when you're listening to a manipulator. I understand. And Donald Trump, Donald Trump but is. But you talked about it. And Donald Trump after is. After George Clooney said and within a few minutes of talking to Donald President Biden Trump, at a fundraiser that he thought this Brett, was not the Brett, same Joe Biden that we saw on the Donald debate stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. I understand. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? <laughs> I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump. We don't have a concern people... about Donald Trump. We have a concern about you answering a fucking question that somebody asked you. Who the best, including leaders of our national security community, have all spoken out, even people who worked for him in the Oval Office. You could tell somebody told her in her little earpiece to go ahead and calm down, sit down, sit back, relax. I got you. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. And that's what they're giving her. <laughs> office worked with him in the Situation Room and have said he is unfit mm. and dangerous and should never be president of the United States again, including his former vice president, which is why the job was open. Okay, so if that's the case, then, ma'am, Madam Vice President, how the fuck did he win that Republican primary then? And and, and one of the largest victories that you could that, that that's either recorded or you know within you know recent memory. And you didn't win shit. Don't nobody fucking want you. Again, whenever she talks about somebody bad, she talks bad about somebody has something negative to say about somebody, she's talking about her fucking self. She's projecting. Him to choose another running mate. So that is a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. Shut the fuck up. Madam Vice President, shit, two yo. more things. You were Holy asked shit. on 60 Minutes about the biggest threat that the world okay, faces, that the US on. faces. This is what you said. 
Which foreign country do you consider to be our greatest adversary? I think there's a, an obvious um, one in mind, which is Iran. Iran has American blood on their hands, okay? The, this attack on Israel, 200 ballistic missiles, um, what we need to do to ensure that um, Iran never achieves the ability to be a nuclear power. My girl, the way, she, the, way she, the way she's doing that question shit at the end of it, man, you're, she's being fed that information, man. That's not how a motherfucker actually talks whenever they're talking about something that they know about and that they're um, informed of and um, uh, on top of. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be on top of shit. You're not going, at the end of it, you know, they're empowering. And then, and then, like, no, you're not going to be doing that. That's a fucking narrative rant. I've said that before on my other shits, man. That's a fucking narrative rant. Those are the same fucking earrings. That's priority. A number of extra experts thought you would say China. Um, the FBI director had said that. But you said Iran. If that's the case, what do you say to critics uh, who look at the actions of your administration and say you're not acting like Iran is the number one threat? Well, I, I will tell you most recently, whether it was in April or in October, and then several hours on each occasion that Iran posed a threat to Israel, I was there. Uh, most recently in the Situation Room, in the most recent attack, working with the heads of our military. And like doing again, what again, she's going up at the end of it, man, a fucking narrative rant. She's being fed this shit, man. She don't believe none of it. She don't know none of it. Like how they say, man, you, don't, you ain't going to get to know her because she's a fucking chameleon. America must always do to defend and to support Israel in its requirement to defend itself and to give American support, support to be able to allow Israel to have the resources to defend itself against attack, including from Iran and Iran's terrorist proxies in the region. Mm -hmm. And that is and, and for my commitment Iran. to that is unyielding and Maybe? unwavering. Critics Maybe. just say that you either relaxed or failed to, to enforce sanctions on Iran, allowing all of this money to flow let, into Iran, like let, billions let, let's in Let's go back to Donald profits. Trump, who, on, who, pulled that, out of, who pulled out of a deal of that would have actually put Donald Trump. Iran in check, the estimates and then in billions it was during Donald Trump's that administration go that the Iran, Iran regime. That, that we had a, an American military base that was attacked where American soldiers suffered. So, so hold on. So she's talking about she got to say hold traumatic on. brain injuries, and Donald Trump dismissed them as headaches. Not to mention Madam how Ms. Donald President, Trump has all of this money has treated and has talked about America's military years. and military service people Critics calling them suckers and losers. Okay, so, 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 I'm trying to break down because, like I said, because when it comes to that that manipulation and narcissistic type of brain, like it's like you got to really. Um, try to stay focused on, you know, the, the, the actual subject as you let them rant and, and go on and where they go. Because I actually forgot again, you know, what the what the basic question is. But what I will say, uh, oh, yeah, with, the, with Trump, <clears throat> how whenever something goes wrong, um, you know, you blame, they'll, they'll blame, you know, their opponent. And she just said that Trump failed to keep Iran in check. Yo, to my knowledge, the world was peaceful when he was in office. Right? The world was peaceful when he was in office. So if the world was peaceful when he was in office, I'm pretty sure that keeping people in check was not one of his issues that he did have if he had any. No, make sure you understand who you're taking from. Come on, has diminished and the significance. We're talking over each other. I apologize. Well, I, and I, and but, I, but I, wish, I would like that we would have a, a conversation that is grounded in full assessment of the facts, which includes, I think this interview is supposed to be about the choices that your viewers should be presented about mm -hmm. This election and the contrast is important. Yes, ma'am. And, and on we... the subject of Iran, I am offering 
what should be an, an important contrast that is presented for folks to make a decision and there are that they feel. Who look at what the administration did and say and think differently. Madam Vice President, they're wrapping me very hard here. I hope you got to say what you wanted to say about Donald Trump. There are a lot of things. <laughs> that, to say. I have there much there more are to say, a lot actually. of things that people want to learn about you and your policies, yes. and that's why we I invite you everyone here. to go to KamalaHarris.com, and you will see that I have 80 uh, pages of policies that are quite comprehensive and should be. Um, accessible to anyone who would like to read them, and it includes what I intend to do about affordable housing, what I intend to do about small businesses, what I do and that's intend why we to do invited to strengthen our economy. To see where you were in 2019 to, and to where you are now. America's military and ensure we have the most lethal and best fighting force in the world. Madam Vice President, and they're giving I, me a hard rap. Well, I thank you for the time. I thank you for the time. It's good to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so that was that. So then that inspired me to go ahead and check out uh, check out hers and Trump's um, uh, websites. So like, so then Trump, you know, seal seal the border, stop, carry out the largest deportation and and inflation, and make America affordable again. Make America dominant energy producer by far. Stop outsourcing. Large tax cuts for workers, no tax on tips. That's that's pretty big. Let's see, defend the Constitution, Bill of Rights, uh -huh. prevent World War Three, and the weaponization of government against the people. Yeah, I believe in stop the migrant immigrant, strike cartels, rebuild our cities, strengthen and modernize the world. Uh -huh. Let's see, keep the U.S. dollar. See, fight for fight for and protect Social Security and Medicare with no cuts, including no change to the retirement age. Let's see, keep women out of men's sports. Keep men out of women's sports and tripping. Let's see, okay, so that that's Donald Trump's right. Just little, it's little 20, 20 little points, right? So then I went to Kamala's, and she had I want to say like twelve or thirteen. Uh, little tabs that you can click on that had a bunch of bunch of information, but one of the things I noticed is that she liked to talk about Trump a lot, right? Where he talks about um, has a tax plan, a national sales tax on all products, blah blah. blah. It's gonna cost. Um, that don't even sound right when he was talking about um, imported goods and stuff like that. He wants to have tariffs on it. For and tariffs it, it charges the people that bring it in, but whatever. Um, yeah, and he said, unlike Trump, we'll protect and strengthen Social Security. Let me see, they will shore up Social Security Medicare so that these essential programs will stay solvent, right? So he, they're trying to say that he's gonna do this and do that. So it's like a, it's just a back and forth. It's just a back and forth, but understand that. Um, To my knowledge, this looks like something that you've actually thought about where you care about the people and, 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 and what they, like, even if you ain't going to do half the shit, like, at least, you know, the fuck that's given to this is much more um, serious than this because, I mean, hell, even in their damn conclusion, like, it was just a, and I went to both of them, like I said, I went to both of the websites because you got to get both sides of shit before you, you know, make certain, come to certain conclusions. But at the end of the day, at the end of this, there was a lot said. Um, appreciate anybody that did make it all the way through because it was a long one. Because, yeah, she brought a lot up out of there. So, um, yeah, bottom line, man, don't, don't believe something until you've looked at it yourself through a lens that's not theirs. You know, through a lens that's not through to what the motherfuckers is telling you is telling you. You know, and remove your heart, your emotions from it, you know, to be able to come to a logical conclusion, a reasonable solution. You know, because all these motherfuckers want you to do is be, um, I don't know how your heartstrings plucked, 
you know, and, and not really having the direction until, you know, it's too late, you in, you in the fire. So, so your Kamala Harris, man, yo, your whole camp, all of everything that you stand for, yo, you are, like I said, you're fucking disgusting and your bullshit is confirmed.